Hi, everybody. This is Lisa Haven, and I've got some pretty breaking things for you here today, but here is the headline. Exclusive interview with media personnel banned from Facebook and why Facebook doesn't want you to know about any of it, and I'm going to share it here as well. Also, a lot more abuse from Facebook is surfacing as we get closer to the new year. And now is the time for a mass exodus, so to speak, from this privacy stealing company. So these are the things that I want to cover today. Um, and I'm going to be talking with two people, Lynn Liaz, who has experienced one of the most heinous times on Facebook. And you're going to, you need to hear her story, as well as John L., who has also experienced lots of heartaches from the Facebook company as well as myself. But you're going to hear their stories today. And both of them are media and writers for Before It's News. So we're going to get into that in a moment. But before they do, I want to cover just a few things. But let's just dive right in. All right. So first thing I want to cover really quick is I put this post out on December 3rd about Facebook bombshell coming at the first of the year. And basically their new terms will be coming out January 1st and you'll be asked to sign these new terms. And what's on these new terms? Lots more privacy stealing, worse, worse privacy stealing because they're not only going to take it from you know, Facebook information, but also from any computer or device that you loaded on. Now, we also made a statement, Big uh, Joe Biggs did, as well as myself, saying that they can or they can allow to share it with things like the CIA, FBI, NSA. Not at any point did we say that Facebook said that they will share it. We said that they want to allow to share third parties like these, or that they can if they so deem. And we all know this because of past events. Now, let me just show you a few clips that how Facebook has been used by companies like the FBI against us, okay? Let me show you a few clips. Now here, probably, this was back in 2012, 100%, this is on Fox News, and it's outcry after a military veteran detained for anti-government Facebook posts. This is crazy, this is crazy, this is, ex explicitly linked to a veteran and Facebook posts just because they were anti-government. He was rounded up. Brandon Rao, but I'm, I'm probably butchering his name, has been in custody since FBI. Okay, they don't share our Facebook with us. FBI, that's a load. That is a, a bunch of lies. Uh, here they are. He has been in custody with FBI. Why? Because of a Facebook post. And um, and it, and it states where. So there you go. I'm going to leave a link if you want to read this, but this isn't the only time. Let me show you more. Here's another one. Mother jailed for promoting terrorism on Facebook. Now this is by The Guardian. Let me show you the link. Here we go. Um, now this has just happened December 11th of this year. While I don't agree with anything the mother has done, they nonetheless found information from her because of what she posted on Facebook, and now she has to face jailing time. Why? Because Facebook talks with people, um, FBI, CIA, police departments, everything else. There you have it. Let me show you more. Um, here is another one. This is on Billboard, and, it, and this is listed on you know, tons of new sites. This isn't the only one. Uh, exclusive man jailed for posting lyrics to Facebook says it's pretty wor worrisome. This was on September 10th, 2014. And while the lyrics aren't exactly <laughs> anything I would be all gun ho about, nonetheless, he was jailed because of something that he did on Facebook. And keep in mind, their new 2015 terms and conditions haven't even gone through yet, and they're already doing it. Now, does, does Facebook say flat out that they share it with the CIA, FBI, NSA? No, they don't. Okay, they wouldn't. They don't say that. But it's basically share it with whomever, so to speak, and they're able to collect that information on you. But there's another one. Let me show you more. Here's another one in the UK, man jailed over Facebook status, raises questions over free speech. This is on cbsnews.com. Um, there's another one. While it is in UK, I still think it's important. Let's go on. Teen arrested after Facebook posts driving drunk. Huh. This one's on Fox 12 in Oregon. Huh. Very interesting. So 
I'm just saying, not that I agree again with some of the stuff that they're doing because I don't, I don't think people should drive drunk. However, I'm trying to show you what Facebook is doing and how our privacy is out the door. Speaking of drinking, I thought, hey, this is on Carbonate TV. I thought this was interesting. Well, um, it says Facebook developing a tool to stop users from making drunken posts. That's interesting. They're going to use basically what this is on is they're going to use some kind of AI uh, technology of the future, so to speak, to basically tell, hey, is this really what you want to do? Really what you want to share? Really, you know, kind of a, a warning. And that is something they're obviously working on as far as the, the tech giant. So that's another thing. Just side note from that. All right. Now that you have seen a lot of different posts and really all you have to do is Google and you can see how many times Facebook or people have been reported and how like the one case with the veteran was even linked with the FBI. So yes, it's being shared folks, but do they say that on their info sheet? No, they don't, but it's very generalized. So you can tell with that, I want to expose real quick a lie from Snopes and uh, then we're going to get into the interview with John L. All right, so here I am on Snopes.com, who their credibility is going down the toilet every day, I have to say. They're a load of crap, and now I know they're full of it. Here's the Facebook post that I had posted about, and it says, Facebook has announced it will be turning over data to the FBI, CIA, NSA. Quote, nowhere did Joe Biggs or I say that on, J Joe didn't say it on his video, nor did I say it on my post, which I just showed you guys. What I said was they want to allow, so to speak. And we made that clear with the video when we showed you exactly, when Joe showed you exactly what was on there. Now that said, okay, I just proved to you as well, even though they say that's not what they're doing, we can see very clearly off of all the news reports that that is exactly what is going on. So they kind of tell about it here. But what I find interesting is this is the info that we shared on the video. Snoops, or Snopes, excuse me, said nothing about that because they know it's 100% true. Everything we shared in it, um, and they go on. They don't discount the text at all, but yet they label what we have as false, and it's not false. I just... You know, if you read this article, I'm going to leave it linked below. You can read it. Not once did they say this text information that we had was false because they know 100% without a doubt it's true. But what they said was this, and no one had said that that's exactly what they do. No, we said that they want to allow it. They can do it if they so choose to. And they even state that later in the post, which I find... <sighs> interesting, which just shows what kind of a crap you get at Snopes. Facebook, relationship to privacy is multifaceted, complex, and perpetually involving issue. No kidding. The continual introduction of novel apps, scripts, devices, and other innovations and their intersection with law, law enforcement, and constitutional protections, ensuring privacy and due process is a matter hotly and intricately debated inside courtrooms in the, in the course of investigations and in the media. Neither that video nor their article could adequately address the breadth of issues contained within the scope of social media and individual privacy concerns. That's ridiculous because that's exactly what this is. And they never said this information is false because they know with 100% certainty it is. But they go on. However, Biggs made a vague specific statement about the particular imminent issue in terms of Facebook, namely that, and um, here would begin excuse me, okay, namely that on January 1st, 2015, Facebook would be colluding with the FBI, CIA, and NSA by providing those agencies with an unspecified set of data about social media users. According to rumors, Facebook announced their upcoming collision via publishing changes in privacy set effective and so forth. Yeah, okay, and, and just, you know, here's the thing. I just showed you that that's exactly what they do. Even without the privacy terms, they're still doing it. And here they are saying it's false, yet I just proved to you it was true. Basically, because I don't want to take up time, what it goes on to say is basically we used vague terms to describe it. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to know exactly what Facebook is doing. We know that they are. But here they are caught in a full-fledged deception. It, this is absurd to me. But anyway, I wanted to share that with you. Quick. And I've got more information from Facebook um, privacy terms here um, that I'm going to want to share with you. But 
Right now, I want to go ahead and pull up Mr. John Ale. All right, so I have with me John Ale um, for the interview that I told you guys about. Now, his story is, is crazy, but he's got one about some of the things that he's been dealing with with Facebook, and he himself has been a writer for Before It's News since 2010. Um, all right, John, can you tell me some of the things that Facebook made you do um, in regards to closing your account and some of the other things that happened? Uh, thank you, Lisa. Uh, Facebook asked me to send my driver license after they found my they closed my account. When I tried to enter, I used my email and password. My Facebook was not working, and they told me that I have to send my driver license so they can make sure I'm the real person. So I sent my driver license to them, and after 48 hours, they just unblocked me, and they said, oh, I do not have, you don't, I, uh, you don't have to share these kind of stories. So they basically monitored and said, okay, don't share these kind of stories that you're sharing. Do they comment any further? Or they just told you not to do it. And all of the stuff, basically, because we post conspiracy theories and the like, facts, conspiracy spat, facts. But yes, because uh, of the stories that I shared, that's why they blocked me and they told me not to share those stories again. That's why Facebook blocked me and they want me not to share. So I stopped sharing those kind of stories. Okay, now, and you were asked to share your driver's license. Did you have to share a passport as well or just your driver's license? They told me like uh, either the driver's license or a passport to work. So I sent my driver's license to them. Okay. And that was uh, a weird like to send my driver's license to mm -hmm. someone that I don't know. Now, have you had any trouble since then? Do you, do you remember the year that they did that in? Have you have you had how many? I had two times. It was 2000, uh, late 2013 and this year, this summer. So 2013 and 2014, it happened twice to you where they asked you for your ID twice? Yes. Mm. Okay. And then they did they unblock it both times, your account, after you sent the ID? Yes, they've unblocked it for, after 48 hours. Okay, awesome. Okay, so, so far we have them telling him, hey, you don't need to post this kind of stuff, number one, and second, you had to go through it twice to, to actually send in your ID or a particular passport. Now, your case, they actually let you back on. Now, I have run into situations where they've blocked me from using Facebook for like three weeks, four weeks at a time. Have you run into that yourself? Oh, yes, I had, uh, the, my Facebook was not, an. Um... I was able to access my Facebook, but I was not able to post stories on groups or shares or comment on other stories or share stories on my wall for more than a month. They did that many times to me. Yes, I, and I, me too. I think all, that's what, um, you know, I was talking to someone else and they said once you get about 5,000 friends, which is their limit, they consider you a target, so to speak, because you're reaching people, a ringleader. And I think all of us who have that amount of friends, because we're reporters, that's just what happens. And then all of a sudden you, you send off signals to Facebook and they start monitoring you. Like I, they locked me off for three weeks once. Um, they've also locked me where I couldn't make comments. They also, um, just all kinds of crazy stuff. And I've only been with Before It's News for a year. So you've been a lot longer for about four years. So you've run into to a little more even than I have, which I'm sure it's in our future. But I think it's a good thing that people know about it. Um, that said, I guess that's kind of it. Is there anything else that you want to add? No, I, but I just want to only like to let you guys know that Facebook is still monitoring me. I am not able to post a lot of like two or three stories a day. I still have that problem. Okay. Wow. Can you share them in the in the groups or are they still not letting you do that? They will let me do in the group like one story per day, but I'm, I cannot share more than one story. Okay, got it. Yeah, that's insanity. Yeah, and they're targeting particular stories. I don't know the reason. All right. Well, thank, thank you, you um, for, for, for getting that. And uh, our next interview is, is going to be Lynn Liaz. So thank you very much, uh, John Ale, for, for telling us that. Is there any website that you have other than Before It's News or is that, that you want to share with the viewers? Uh, no, thank you, Lisa. All right. All right. Thanks, John. You're welcome.
All right, so as you can see from Mr. Ale, he was asked for his passport or his identification. He continually gets banned as well as myself. I always get banned. And you're gonna hear an even striking story from Lynn Liaz in a moment. But let me show you a couple of the new policies coming in 2015. Here are some of the privacy info currently on there, so to speak, but um, you're gonna get more as well. But here's what I want to focus on. Other information we receive about you. All right. All right, so here we are. We receive data from or about the computer, mobile phone, or other devices you use to install Facebook apps or to access Facebook, including when multiple users log in from the same device. This may include network and communication information, and it says may, may include, such as your IP address or mobile phone number and other information about things like your internet service, operating system, location, the type of device or browser you use, or the pages you visit. For example, we may get your GPS or other location information so we can tell you if any of your friends are nearby, or we could request device information to improve how our application works on the device. Um, huh, I don't know about you, but I could don't want anybody monitoring my device. And notice, the other thing is that they may include all of this stuff. It doesn't say that's all we'll include. It says it may include some of the stuff, but they receive data from or about the computer, mobile phone, or other devices you use to install Facebook apps on. Got it? So this, these are some major issues, and they also say that they get data from their affiliates or advertising partners as well. Um, so lots there. Now, if it was only about gathering data so they can share it with your friends, then why do they feel the need to block people like John Ale, myself, Lynn Liaz, and many other, at least I, I know before it's news writers because I write before it's news, but I know the same kind of stuff is happening with people at InfoWars and all other places. Anybody who is preaching or teaching truth in regards to news, they are hacking down on. So if it wasn't about receiving data about your friends and it's all about the social network, then why are they banning people from Facebook? Why are they, why are they asking us for our IDs and passports? You can't just assume. And why are people being turned into, like you said with the, like you saw with the veteran, the police departments, the FBI's? Okay, it's not just receiving data so they can share it with their friends and get your GPS location to find out who's nearby. It is so much more than that. And let me tell you something. I'm 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 on scene.is. I don't share anything on Facebook that I don't want people to know about. And I really suggest if anything, you get off of Facebook. Okay, because Facebook is not the place to be. Go to TSU, go to Scene, go somewhere. I personally use Scene. I don't get any benefit if you go there. I sign up there because it is out of an out of an ice a server in Iceland, not even here in America, and it is got it has groups and everything. And at least I keep my privacy, and they don't share it like we are seeing here with Facebook. And that's Scene.is. I'll leave information on that. But um, what I want to do also. I show you just a few things on this and it says as we described in how we use the information we receive we also put together data from information we already have about you and your friends and others and where do they gather that information sometimes from third parties and obviously from their own information and they make suggestions for you okay these are just things that send up all kinds of ticks for me now let me show you another post now here's on huff post didn't read facebook's five fine print. Here's exactly what it says. And it's got, I'm going to leave a link to this. I don't want to get into it, but we may use all of the information we receive about you. Uh, what, what you like, things you share, keywords from the stories you share. Um, that's some more. Here's some more. It gives you permission to use your name, your profile, your content, your information without any compensation to you. Um, all these are coming in the new year. Today we learned about your interests primarily from things you do on Facebook, such as pages you like. Starting soon in the U.S., we will also include information from some of the websites and apps you use. That's up and coming, um, but lots on the forefront. 
Um, here this past June, Facebook announced that it would start using data from users' web browsing history to serve targeted advertisements. Okay, this is already in effect. Um, let's say that you're thinking about buying a new TV and you start researching TVs on the web. We can show you ads for deals on TV. So basically, that's what they're doing to help you get the best price, so they say. And because we think you're interested in electronics, we may show you ads for other electronics in the future. Um, so lots there. Then there's also this. Privacy advocates Leary of new Facebook Nielsen Partnership. Okay, and uh, what is this company? It's, it's leveraging an expanded partnership with Facebook to learn more about the age and genders of viewers on mobile devices, a data collecting um, agency, so to speak. So just who is Nielsen? Uh, that Facebook merged with well here's they here they are let's find out about this company that merged with Facebook uh, whether you're eyeing markets in the next town or across continents we understand the importance of knowing what consumers watch and buy that's our passion and the very heart of our business to know what you do every minute of every hour of every day huh they study consumers in more than a hundred countries not just here in America, folks, to give you the most complete view of trends and habits worldwide, and we're constantly evolving, not only in terms of where we measure or who we measure, but in how our insights can help you drive profitable growth. Isn't that a beauty? All right, so here's one last thing I wanted to share with you guys, and as you can see, government request from, you guessed it, Facebook. Facebook. You know, Facebook claims they're not sharing with our government yet here, right here. I have the link to them doing exactly that, but we're going to find out exactly how many. Um, here you can select the report. Let's just look at last year's or the, the end of last year. But it says we report U.S. government requests in two sections below, one for law enforcement requests and another for national security requests. U.S. law enforcement requests for data. We respond to valid requests relating to criminal cases. Each and every request we receive is checked for legal sufficiency, and we reject or require greater specificity on requests that are overly broad or vague. Hmm. Well, back in July through December of last year, they got 12,598 requests. And how many users did they profile? 18,715. Interesting. Percent that Facebook allowed the government to do this was 81%. That is high. That means pretty much the majority of the time, that is what they're letting them do. You know, check whatever they want. It even gets into request type and what they needed it for. Uh, but let's check another year. Let's check January through June of this year. Uh, data is again similar. We have 15,433 requests, 23. See these numbers going up? They are going higher. And again, we have 80% approval rate from Facebook itself. So I know you guys are well aware that this is exactly what Facebook is doing. And now is the time to spread the word. Now, if you haven't heard of Scene.is, as you're seeing here, it's, it's really great. It's an alternative that you can use to Facebook. Now, I'm not sharing this with you because I profit off of it, because I don't. I don't gain anything for sharing this with you guys, but I share it with you so you know that there are alternatives out there. I believe TSU is another one. Uh, scene is one. TSU is one. There's lots of them out there, but I bring this to you just so you know that there are options out of Facebook and at some point I can feel it in my bones there will be a mass exodus so with that what I want to do now is bring on Lynn Leaz if you guys do not know who she is she is an author on before it's news as well and she has been an author I believe for two years but Facebook has given her the complete runaround so much so um, that she hasn't even been allowed back on but I'm gonna let her tell her story so let's just go ahead and bring her in all right Lynn are you there with me yes I am okay 
Um, for all the listeners out there, will you just tell them kind of like a shortened version, if you will, what happened to you on Facebook with the details, of course. Okay, well, I will start off with my personal account and my author account, both. My personal account I had since Facebook opened. The author account I had since 2012. Well, suddenly, no matter what I did, they were shutting down all of my accounts, giving me the option to prove who I was. On my author account, I supplied my uh, press pass, which in their list was a reasonable form of ID. It had my author name, it had my um, address, phone number, it had the contact of the news agency, which was the radio uh, program, the uh, radio uh, leading edge, and even a contact for them. They said that wasn't good enough. Then they hit my personal account um, under my you know, real name that I'd had since they opened and asked for ID. I supplied my identification as requested to prove who I was. They wrote me back. And they said that my account would still be disabled. They would not reopen it because my state driver's license was not sufficient enough information. Now, I also, every time I open an account as Lindley Oz or even as my real name, they instantly shut me down now. Within a day or two, they don't even give me an option to... Um, you know, to prove who I am or anything, they shut me down. And this is, to me, this is discrimination. That Why am I not allowed to have a Facebook account? I see other people post similar things to what I posted. Why me? You know, why, I, I want to be able to connect at least. Now, this most recent one I opened, um, I was doing nothing other than having communications with my friends and family on Facebook. I hadn't even posted anything except maybe one link in our Vinyl Life news group. But I was mostly just communicating with friends, fans, family, and stuff like that, like in private messages or on my wall. I hadn't done a thing. And bam, within, what was it, one day? I only had it open for one day, and they shut me down. And I know that you keep getting the ring around because I'll share your new profile update because you and I obviously do the show together. And then within a couple of days, everybody's like, where did Lynn go? She disappeared. But they completely banned you. I mean, you can't even get on under Lynn Leah's or any other name for that matter because they trace your IP address to, to, to where your computer is linking out of, correct? Yeah, and it's not fair. I mean, I'm not, if I get on there as my real name and I'm not doing anything, I shouldn't get shut down. And my other, And I see plenty of authors who use pen names. Yeah. You're allowed to have a pen name, you know, uh, that people use for their books and stuff. I see author Facebook pages who have pen names. Yet they, Why am, what's different about me? Why am I not allowed? Well, we all know that they've been specifically targeting media. Like we know InfoWars has been targeted. We know other media outlets. We know Before It's News has been targeted. And I had John Ale on earlier who he himself have received. And I don't know if you knew this, Lynn, but he received a message from Facebook telling him not to post that kind of news. And which tells me even more, you know, we're reporting truth. And with the news that you and I report, it's obviously got a lot of truth behind it. And so they're censoring that as much as they can. And um, some of the other things that I know you're, and you, you really, you've been a, excuse me real quick, but you've been a reporter for about two years, right? For BIN? Yes. yes. And, and that's I when feel, the problem started I do, coming. I do feel that there's a lot of censorship going on. Um, I do get trolled heavily. I'm hated. Um, as you saw on Facebook, there was a hate group that was trying to damage me and so forth. And I just want to mention off the subject, because I, I don't know if anybody can tell, I have a terrible cold right now. And I'm like, really, like, <laughs> I really think I probably sound bad. And I'm sorry for that. But I just have a terrible cold. If people bear with me, it's not going away. So, um, but uh, yeah, they're just like heavily censoring me and I'm really irritated about it because I think I have a right to at least have a personal Facebook and to be able to communicate with people. Now, um, can you tell me some of the things they did to you before they fully banned you? 
they were blocking me every every few weeks for posting in groups for a month at a time. And as soon as I would get unblocked, I would get blocked again. All year this year, starting with, I don't know, around February, March. Even a couple times before that, there was even a few times at the end of 2013 that it happened. Very rare, though, but it got more and more where I was just getting blocked. Then, finally, they actually blocked me from replying to people. I could not comment to anybody. I could not like or comment or reply to anybody on Facebook. I could make posts on my own page, but I could not do anything else. They did that to me too. Yep. So those are just steps, steps before they fully banned you. And regardless of the fact that you've provided them with your ID card, your, I mean, your driver's license and your press pass, they still won't let you on, right? That's right. And I have sent them several hundred messages to no avail. All right. Awesome. Begging them, literally begging them to please respond to me because I didn't know if it was their bot, their spam bot had nabbed me like that can happen on YouTube. And, but the thing with YouTube is if you write them, there's a place that says send feedback at the bottom of every page you're on, on YouTube. Then you take a screenshot. They usually take care of it because their bot got me on YouTube the other week. It, um, unmonetized one of my videos and I took a screenshot, sent feedback and said, Hey, this is my own creation. There's nothing on here of anyone else's. It's made with screen matic Why did you guys, you know, take my monetization off? And all of a sudden, next thing I know it was fixed. Now they do censor sometimes too. They, they did that to a video of mine and put a warning on it saying that there was, um, there was sensitive and, um, offensive content in it. And there was nothing. It was just me using a screen matic with words on the screen talking about how, um, you know, the war thing is, you know, how about how we, you know, whether or not World War Three was going to happen and it mentioned ISIS. And that's all there was. So, I mean, they can be funny, too. But Facebook is the worst. Facebook is the epitome of hell. Yeah. And, and I mentioned to the to the viewers in the other interview that they have been doing the same stuff to me as well. And I haven't been officially banned or asked for my ID yet, but I do see it in the very near future, considering almost everyone at BIN who are reporters um, oh, have been I asked. Did, I did forget one detail that's important. Okay, when they do this thing where they log you out and they make you do some tests in order to get back into your account, here at the end, what they did to me is they made me identify people's pictures by their name and stuff. So anyhow, I had to identify people's pictures and so forth. Well, I had 500 or was it 5,000 friends? Okay. There are a lot of them fans. They were pulling up pictures of cartoon characters and babies from people's personal profile, asking me to identify whose account this was from. And not only do they do that, they usually give you a multiple choice at the bottom to put a bullet by, right? Uh huh. They didn't have that. I had to type it in. I had to know in my brain who this was. Now I've got 5,000 friends. Most of them I don't personally know. And they're giving me pic cartoon pictures from people's pictures list and pictures of somebody's baby. How, and they took away the multiple choice, so I can't guess a name I or skip. There was no option to skip. I had to manually type something in. I mean, that's impossible. How are you going to know what? Oh, oh, I know who that is. By a car, they got a cartoon picture of Jesus with his arms spread open and a dove coming down. Oh, well, that must be Lisa Haven's account. I mean, <laughs> how, how do I or Or somebody's baby. It could be a grandbaby or something. You know, what am I? Oh, that's little baby. I mean, who am I going to know? They were making it impossible for me. Oh, I agree. They, I've had, I've had a similar thing purpose. and they've done and, it to me. And then there's times they want you to type in that code. That's yeah. about, what is it called again? I can't think of the name of it. Some kind of verification code. I don't even know what the official. Well, name it's is. to prove that you're a human and it has those messed up looking letters and numbers you have to enter in. Yes. Anyways, they would give ones to me that were impossible to figure out. But then when I did get one that was pretty clear, mm -hmm. they said I, I, that it was incorrect when I know it was not incorrect. Mm -hmm. It was like ones I would keep clicking till I got one that was clear. 
So, I mean, they've been very unfair to me. They have been manipulative. They are discriminating against me. And I guess they can, you know, they, they're an organization. I guess they're allowed to discriminate. Yeah. Flat out. And as anyone who is patriotic, anyone who is sharing truth, that is their target. Well, thank you, um, Lynn, for, for sharing your story with us. I, I really appreciate you taking the time to do that. Yes. I'm sorry. It took me so long. Like I said, I've been sick the past few days and to be quite honest, it's kind of hard to talk because I want to cough every time I'm talking. So, you know, I apologize that it's taken me so long. But no, thank you for good. having me. Well, thank you. Well, you have a uh, good day. You too. All right. All right. So there you have it. We have our two exclusive interviews on how Facebook is just controlling and pushing laws and regulations and shoving privacy out the door. Now, here's the thing. If you think you are immune to it, you're not. It's very likely that you could be the next victim that Facebook has. And this is just one more reason to get onto something else. TSU, scene.is, um, something else that's out there. And because Facebook is going down the tubes, they have sold out their audience to everyone and anyone. And they also ban people based off of the things that they are posting. One example, John L., second example, Lynn Liaz, and I myself have had my own fair days of where they block me. Like I said, I've been blocked off for three weeks at a time. I've been blocked where I couldn't make comments. So I am on that similar path. Anyone in the media preaching truth, that is what they do. And I won't be shocked if they attempt to remove this as well off of Facebook. So anyhow, read it while it's available. This is Lisa Haven signing off.